Welcome to Flying Hammer DIY. Today we're going to go over how to make the final electrical connections on a built-in cooktop. A little background on this project. Our church built a new kitchen and had cabinets and new quartz countertops installed. Most countertop install companies, especially the ones for quartz and granite, will make the cutouts for your sinks in any built-in appliances and install them and mount them to the countertop. Sometimes you can pay extra to have them make the final electrical connections and or plumbing connections for you. So please double check with your installer before you purchase so you know exactly what is going to happen at install time. Also, make sure you look over the installation booklet that came with your appliance to ensure you have the proper size circuit breaker and wiring that is required for that appliance. Before doing any electrical work, ensure that the circuit breaker is turned off at your panel. For this particular cooktop, it requires a 40 amp breaker, 240 volts that is hardwired directly to the appliance. First, we loosen up the screws and remove the cover to the electrical box that was installed under the cabinet. Before removing the wire nuts, we're going to use a voltage tester to ensure the power is really turned off to these wires. I'm using a pen style non-contact voltage tester. When it's turned on, the light will blink. If there is current detected, there will be an audible tone and the light will turn steady red. These testers cost around $30. You can find them at Lowe's, Home Depot, or Amazon. I'll put an Amazon link down in the description. Now that I'm sure the power is off to these wires, I'm just adjusting them out of the box to gain easier access for the connections. These are 8 gauge wires, so they are heavy duty, very stiff, so sometimes they're hard to maneuver around, especially in a tight space. Now we're going to install the cable coming from the cooktop into the electrical box. First we feed the wires in. They're encased in a metal braided cable for protection. So we're going to slide all the wires all the way in. Once the braided cable is all the way in the connector, we will tighten the little screw at the top and that will ensure that the cable cannot be pulled out. Now we're just going to start matching up the wires together. The green wire is always the ground. The wire coming from the wall is just a bare wire and that is the ground. So we will uh, connect the green wire coming from the stove to the bare ground wire that goes to the circuit breaker box. This is a 240 volt system so we actually do not use the white wire that goes to the circuit breaker box. It has to do with the voltage and frequency of the 240 system. Without going into too much detail, a 240 circuit breaker is twice as wide as a 120 and actually connects on two 120 spots in the breaker box. So there's actually a red wire and a black wire coming from the circuit breaker. This is basically 120 each. To make an electrical circuit, you need current coming from the electrical box to the appliance and then returning via another wire, usually the white wire. Household electricity is AC, which stands for alternating current. So think of it as a wave at the beach. The power comes in as the wave and then it returns. And then it comes back in and returns. So it alternates back and forth. In a pure 240 system, like this appliance requires, you have two sets of waves. On one side you have the wave coming in, on the other side you have the wave coming back, returning to the box, and that completes the circuit so we do not need the neutral wire. If, for example, this was an oven that had a standard 120 volt light bulb inside, that would require the white wire to be connected and the appliance would use one of the supply lines, either red or black, for the current and the white wire would be the return to provide 120 volts to power the light. As you could tell in the video, I was having a little trouble stripping the wire as a reminder, this is 8 gauge wire, so it's much thicker than your standard 12 or 14 gauge that would be an electrical outlet. I was just using my standard wire strippers using the 12 gauge spot. B 
being careful not to squeeze too hard to damage the copper underneath and just cutting through the plastic coating to expose the wire. I also like to use some electrical tape around the wires when I'm finished. It's not required but it gives me a little sense of comfort to know that at least the hot ones have a little extra protection on them. We then repeat the process for the red wire making the connection with a wire nut and then some electrical tape. Once that's complete we tuck all the wires into the electrical outlet it helps if you curve them a little bit, especially with these real stiff, thick wires. And then we will reinstall the cover. If you'd like some more information about electrical connections, 120 versus 240, how circuit breakers work, etc., let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll make a video specifically on electrical circuits. Once the cover is secured, we're going to go back to the circuit breaker box and turn the power back on and then test it out at the cooktop to make sure everything works. The final step is to secure the cable under the cabinet using a clamp that will keep it up out of the way so people have full access to the cabinet underneath. I hope this video helps you with your project. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you want more information about or have any questions. And thank you for visiting Flying Hammer DIY. Have a great day.